Well, howdy there, friends and family. I hope you can hear me. And, of course, I hope you can see me. And, uh, glad to be back with y'all. And, where are we at? Well, we're in the big woods. Not all that far from my house. And you might wonder, why are we here? Now, I know the lighting's not good right now. It's overcast. And it's been storming off and on all day. But I just couldn't sit in the house any longer. It's been off and on rain the last couple of days. And I just felt housebound. I need to get out. I needed to do some soul searching maybe. And there's no better place to do it to ease your stress, at least with me, than here in this old growth forest. And I know it's an old growth forest. Now part of it was cultivated and part of that homestead I was sitting at the other day that disappeared for whatever reason back in the mid to late 60s. But then part of it has also been here since the time of the first white explorer. And you might wonder who that was. Well, that explorer, he was European from Spain. And his name was De Soto. And he came right down through here along the Tallapoosa River. The 16 or uh, 600 of his men, I guess mostly soldiers, and they were exploring this area, as well as many others in Florida, Georgia, up to the Carolinas and that, in the search of gold. Well, they didn't find much gold. But what they found in this area was the home and capital of what was then the uh, upper... Creek Nation, Native American, and their capital was approximately a little less than five miles from where I'm standing right here, and it too was named Towsey, but it was spelt T-A-L-S-I, and of course with the white man, that got changed to the Towsey spelling we know today, which is T-A-L-L-A-S-S-E-E. -E. But anyway, there were a whole lot of Native Americans in this area. And in this particular woodland where I am now, there was another small village of them, as there was a much larger village about a mile up towards north, and many more. De Soto, him and his men came on down through here, and then they camped with the creeks down below here, where somewhere, according to historians, 15, approximately 30 days before heading west towards what we now know is the uh, Mississippi River. That still don't probably tell you. Other than I'm out here wandering and rambling why I'm in this deep dark woods. Well, I've been thinking a lot lately. And all of y'all know I'm really very supportive of making sure you have adequate food resources 
on hand at your home and hopefully in secondary locations to support yourself and your family should some uh, life crisis event take place whether that's a job loss whether that's a uh, a natural disaster or some other thing I don't prepare normally for something of a global nature or of a national nature but here lately I've been thinking that may change and I'm not going to get into all the whys and reasons I'll leave that up to y'all to wonder why but what it made me start thinking about is how much food is enough. Now I prepare for myself, my daughter, my son, my grandson, four of us. That's about the best I can do. And I would like to think right at this moment I have somewhere between two and three years set back, possibly more. And we could stretch that by immediately growing more on our property. And I have grown way much more. Especially if you look back at a video, I think it was called Past Times at Deep South Bama, something like that. I'll put a link in the description below. I used to grow a lot of food on my little half acre of ground for my family. But with just me here now, and those of you who have followed the channel and have seen, I grow a little bit, not a lot. I mostly do that to promote the fact that based on even little plantings, a little bit of ground, everyone can do it. I'm trying to encourage my daughter and my grandson, really, which don't have their own place. But uh, I could always pick that up and grow a ton more. But all that being said, that would stretch everything out However fast I can get all that going, I am going to prepare some ground through this winter to open up a garden plot that I used to have uh, before. And that should be ready by spring. But the problem is, with fresh food, one person living there at the house can only consume so much, which means I have to store the remainder. Now, I'll be honest, if you watch my videos, you'll understand. I'm slap out of freezer space, and if I dare showed you the rest of the house, you'd know I'm pretty much out of space there. Plus, I have long-term freeze-dried food stored in a secondary location. So, but is that enough? And that comes down to the question of just what happens. Of course, you know, if a meteor strikes there, probably not gonna be enough. But there's a lot of talk about things both environmental and political that could have a far longer term effect on how much food as well as water medical supplies and other things we should have on hand but the more I've thought about it the more I've thought you can still only have so much I mean, I struggle now that it's just me to keep things rotating. 
And a lot of what I have gets rather old. Still good though, trust me. Because as I work my way through it, I'm eating it. And as you can see, as of today, Tuesday, December the 10th, I have yet to die or actually get sick. Of course, you gotta use some sense there when you're uh, using up your old preps. You gotta smell them. You gotta look at them, see if they look right, smell right. When you open them up, you wanna make sure you get that vacuum pop, especially canned goods. And then you wanna make sure you cook them thoroughly. Now, be it, you cannot cook out botulism, people. Understand, no matter how hot you heat that up, botulism will kill you dead. But here again, how much can you have back? So that's what I wanted to ask all of you out there. Now, you don't need to put in the comments how much you got, unless you want to. I just want your thoughts based on yourself and your family how much you think you need based on current environmental and uh, geopolitical politics of the time. So if you would, I had to put my glasses on because I'm seeing things here on the ground. You know, Lord knows. I don't think there's a speck of earth that man hasn't touched and left something behind. Let me show you here. See right here? That's an old cannon jar. See that? That's a ball cannon jar. Perfect mason. And God knows how long that's been there. Now with me, I don't leave nothing behind but footprints and some ruffled leaves. And of course, somebody's throwing out a plastic water bottle. And you know, I don't buy a bottle of water with the exception that I do have some poor cases that I keep on hand should uh, we have a natural disaster. And it takes our power out for a while or something of that nature. And I struggle to cycle through it until it, before it gets bad. In fact, last I had, I wound up using it to water plants. I didn't want to drink it, then got too old. So y'all think about that. How much food is enough? How much water is enough? And maybe you'll elaborate on why you feel the way you do. But what I try to do in these videos of mine, just not do a video as a legacy for my children and grandchildren. But I also do them to educate and inspire others. And it's that inspiration, as well as a little bit of education. While the old man's out here tromping around in deep dark woods. See, I know this woods here once upon a time, supported a very robust and large Native American population. Now granted, there is evidence in recorded history that they also planted and cared for some crops. And I'm sure that was probably corn, squash, beans, 
stuff of that nature. But they also harvested from this beautiful land. And it maintained them for hundreds and hundreds of years before the white Europeans ever came across this place. But hands back to the inspiration part. I'm out here looking and scouting for what's available. And there are a lot of things out here. And with the rain, there's a lot of opportunities, though I haven't seen any yet. I was looking for mushrooms. Haven't seen them. I have seen a lot of different native trees. There's some beach out here. There's a uh, hickory trees. And there's some rather large longleaf pines. And there's muscadines. Let me show you one here. A vine. Here's a muscadine vine right here. See them all over there? Now granted, they go all the way up in that overstory canopy. So it's gonna be hard to get them muscadine grapes. They could be got, now I'm sure long ago, Native Americans figured out a way to do that. I'd probably figure out a way to harvest them too. But here's another thing I was looking at. And folks, whatever you do, don't download this video on your phone and use what I'm showing you to go out in your area and forage for wild food. You need to get with a local expert and learn from him. I'm just out here on a scouting mission. Let me show you. See right there? That's a nice, soft, fresh mushroom. If it's not poisonous, it could be rather tasty. And I'll take a look at it right off hand I can't really tell I'm not going to put that much effort into it but there's a possibility but that's another thing mushrooms can take you out in a heartbeat you don't take no chances and just like with bears just because you see a bird eating don't mean they won't kill you either. As with so many other things out in the wild. You have to be educated. And that's where the inspiration part of this video comes in. Now, you may not have a nice big wooded old growth stand forest near you. But if it all goes bad... You might be able to make your way to one. And that, and my point being, learn now while there's time. Well, hopefully, you'll never have to use it. But if you do, you're ready. Now, I am well trained. My father, my grandfather, they were the first ones to teach me in the skills of woodcraft, bushcraft, what they now call it. Then, later on, as a young man, I would have a couple of training events, courtesy of Uncle Gov. And, uh, 
I feel pretty confident. I can come out here, find the things I need to survive and to thrive. And I can teach them to my son and daughter. And my grandson, if I'm still living. You know, I actually used to take my children when they were young. And about once a month, we would go out into the woods. We were living in southern Tennessee at the time. And I'd take them out in the woods and we'd forage for food. And whatever we found, that would be our meal for that evening. And they really got a big kick out of that. They thought that was just amazing. Most amazing part of it was that it was actually tasty. Now in this woods, I know, there's a sizable deer population. Nobody hunts this woods anymore and hasn't for quite some time. The old man almost fell down there. This particular area is not all that flat. I know many people comment that where I live seems to be just flat. That's not so. Now, I live on top of what they call the Piedmont Uplift, which is the last, you might say, shelf or ridge for the Appalachian Mountains before it drops off to the coastal plain. And that's only a couple miles from here. <clears throat> but where I'm at right now, it's up, it's down, it's all around. But I don't want you to wait till all hell breaks loose or SHTF happens. Well, that's a national economic collapse. Uh, meteor strike, whatever. Global warm, global cooling, or just break down and Geopolitical politics breaks out into a war. Get out now. Start learning. And you might say, well, I watch YouTube. I use Google. No. You need to get with a local expert and get out there have him or her pointed out, show you what you can, eat and forge, and what'll kill you. Because in every area, it's somewhat different. And once you become trained, you will always have that skill. So, that's the main reason for this video. To inspire you to get up, get out, and learn that skill. While there's still time. So y'all, oh, let me show you something unique. It's more trash. It's an old Budweiser can. But notice the pull tab. This goes back to the probably 50s and 60s. I haven't seen a tab like that in probably that long. Like I say, there's absolutely no place on earth that man hadn't touched in some way or another. And that's always bothered me. 
But it just is what it is. Can't take it away. Can't take it back. Now, I'm sure there's a lot more junk off in here a long time ago. And a lot of that has gone away. So, I'm climbing up top of another ridge here. And that'll make it easier for the old guy. I'm near some houses. Which means I've walked a sizable distance. Pretty much about oh half a mile or more. And let, hopefully the camera will pick this up, show you where I've been. You can see. I just climbed up from there. <clears throat> and this whole area, just to the west of my home, are the last step ridges that descend down into what's called the coastal basin, which is pretty much slightly rolling hills, flatlands, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, I ain't all far, that far from the Gulf of Mexico. But let me show you something that has long past left Alabama. It's right there in front of you. And we're going to head on up. You see that massive pine tree? See that one there to the right? And these others? Those are known as longleaf pines. At one time, they were everywhere in this state. You can just see by the sheer size of them. They were used to make cabins and homes, railroad ties, and ship masts. And they were about logged into extinction. That's another reason I know <laughs> this is an old growth forest. Because the long leased pines are still in here. Well granted, they're not as heavily populated as the hardwoods are. But there's all kinds of hardwoods in here. Oaks, hickories, beech, and about every other species you can think of. It's actually extremely beautiful back in here and extremely peaceful. It's almost, I don't know, it's like it has a quiet, serene spirit of its own. Let me show you this tree here in front of me. Right here. This is a southern magnolia tree. And if you pay attention, we've walked by many of them in this old woods. You know, I like coming into the woods late fall, early winter. There's no threat of having a rattlesnake or some other vile creature biting and killing me. It's a pretty cool day. It's about 61 degrees. And uh, we got a wind coming in from the Northeast, six to eight miles an hour, and gusting on up even harder than that. But it's been 
years since I walked this old forest. And that was due to working all the time. See, now I got time. And that's why I'm out here taking a look, scouting around. You might say, it's no different than browsing the grocery store. Except, to me, it's definitely more peaceful and more beautiful. Plus, it's good exercise. Gets me out of the house where I'm just not sitting there worrying about things. Of course, once I get done traipsing through these woods today, I'm going to spend some quality hours getting all this video footage edited for y'all. I hope you've enjoyed uh, walking in the woods with me today and uh, listening to me ramble. I know a lot of my subscribers, they live alone like me. And they've said they enjoy my videos and they really don't care about what I'm doing, or what I'm saying. Just keeps them from being lonely. I don't know if you can see it out there. There was a deer, whitetail, just running across. Way out there in the distance. I wish I could have got him for you. He's a big, beautiful one. You know, there's deer here. There's turkey. And what I've never seen here has been uh, wild hogs. You go about five, seven, eight miles toward the south, down in the coastal basin flats. Well, wild hogs are there. Ain't no doubt about that. And there's a mess of them. Oh. And as we walked, you know, there's another little mushroom. And here again, I'm not going to pick it up and eat it. You see, folks, when you get really hungry, people are forced to do things they never thought they'd do ever before in their life. They take risks. And when you're talking about eating wild edibles, origin and those risks could be deadly and that brings me up to the last question i'd like to ask all of y'all maybe it'd be so kind to also include it in the comments because i think it's relevant to what i've been talking about today and that is how long in your lifetime have you went without eating? And I don't just mean some snacks. I mean without eating, period. Because I'm going to tell you what. 
if you haven't gone without for several days, you cannot imagine how you're going to feel, how you're going to think, and how desperate you're going to get. I've been there. Now, by the grace of God, my parents never let me go hungry. But I did have a few times in my life where I did have to go a day, two, three, four without a meal. So if you would, and you don't mind, in the comments tell me how long you've ever went without eating. Well, y'all, I got to head on out of here. I hopefully the lighting was good enough to see me. And the wind wasn't too bad that you couldn't hear me. But I'm coming to some uh, rough underbrush. And I'm going to have to put you all away and make my way back through it. We've been out here a few hours, stomping around this place. We got a better handle on what's out here, just in case I need it. I gotta find my way back out of here. Shouldn't be too hard. It's only a couple thousand acres. How hard could it be? <laughs> I'll be fine. name are these culverts doing out in the middle of this wood and then how did they get here and they've been here a while and I've never seen them before of course I can't say I've ever went traipsing all around this woods like I have today. And here, folks, this comes to the point of what you just find sometimes in an area you think you know. Oh, we're coming down the very important part of this woods that you need to know or at least I need to know because water is extremely crucial and by the looks of here I'm on an old roadway and I haven't been right here to this part in quite some time. I got a nice stream here.
and a nice fall. Downright beautiful. Imagine that. Well, this is good to know because I do have a Berkey water filter. If I ever need a fresh water source, here I go. Because I'm sure once upon a time, this provided water for not only the white settlers, but the Native Americans before them. And I knew the creek was here. I just never seen this section of it. It's very tranquil, very peaceful. I hope y'all can hear it. Well, I gotta get myself back up out of here. Ain't like I can call no Uber. Get the old man up out of here. Up, up the ridge we go. Yep, I think we made it. Heading on out of the deep woods. Won't be long now. I can see civilization through the trees. There's my big old water tank. It sits to the north. We made it out. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate your guidance.